how Auburn beat Kentucky is why you should be excited. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. We're dapping it up with the Daryl Dapper, who joins me every Sunday morning as we recap these games, and thank goodness we're recapping a win. We'll talk about Kajark West Hunter. Keep this up against the other teams on Auburn's schedules, whereas as well as what this win means moving forward for the Tigers. But Daryl, 24 to 10, the Auburns take down Kentucky, which obviously that's big. Kentucky's not that good, though, Daryl. It's how Auburn won that matters. Absolutely. Look, I know there's an old expression, coaches like to say it. Just winning the game is the most important thing. It's you know, don't show me how you cut up the cow. Just show me the steak. There's a couple of those analogies, but I look at it this way. Auburn played a Kentucky team that, yes, not very good, but good defensively, yep. good against the run. Yep. The most important thing is how they won the game, yep. meaning there was some adversity there. Mm-hmm. There were some old tapes being played on that field at Kroger Field, some things that were just on rewind rinse and repeat that Auburn has done in the past that that popped up. How Auburn responded to those familiar yes. traits is the most important thing because you've got to do it the first time before you can do it the next time. Mm-hmm. And so here's the deal. Now when Auburn plays Vandy or A&M or whoever and something happens that's that's disappointing or that's adversity – they can draw on two particular series of plays and say, that was not good. That was what happened all year. Those old tapes were being played. And yet, this time, they didn't fold. They overcame and answered. And yeah, on, answered. on both sides of the ball, too. I, both I sides love, of the ball. I, and we talked about this a lot in, in the postgame show. Be sure to check that out as well when you're done with this one. It's on the same YouTube channel or or audio feed. but. When we talked about how they totally crumbled at the end of the first half, I do want to touch on that in a little bit. And the first drive of the second half, maybe their best drive of the season. Okay, they put that behind them. As well as a situation where they're up seven going into the fourth quarter. And, I mean, how many times have they said, okay, we've got to lead in the fourth quarter. Can we hold on to it? And they haven't been able to. They went down in there and scored, which I think is huge. But then, let's go a step further, Daryl. This defense, I mean, how many times this year has Auburn had a uh, a lead in the fourth quarter or been playing for a game in the fourth quarter and a quarterback who has been limited all game starts to get a little hot? And that's what we saw Kentucky do. Their backup quarterback got a little hot. And what did they do? They have an epic goal line stand that resulted in an interception on fourth down by Kay and Lee. Everybody on this team was tested. And they were tested in a way where they had failed multiple times this season, and they all got to pass Saturday night. You know, Auburn's defense, I'm glad you mentioned the defense because people want to focus on the offense and and, and extending the lead, which they weren't able to do in those games against Oklahoma and Missouri. But the defense wasn't able to get off the field against Oklahoma and Missouri either and get a stop, a key stop, and keep them from scoring a touchdown. That's right. And, and oh, by the way, you know, the the, the Hawkins kid, it, it – Oklahoma backup quarterback, you know, comes in the game. So Auburn's defense did what they couldn't do the previous games and get a stop. And boy, did they ever get a stop in a big way on Mm -hmm. fourth down inside the three. Auburn's offense answers inopportune, horrible penalties, bad mistakes, missed field goals, clock management, yada, 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 answers those by making plays. Look, every time Auburn lost a game this year, it was like, They are finding different ways to lose. They are learning how to lose in a variety of ways. Yeah. Night or last night, they found a way, they they learned how to win in those situations. You got to do it the first time. I keep saying that. I know it sounds cliche, but they found a formula and they found ways to win. And I think just you have to learn how to do that. Last night, they did. They they now just the best. Because they did it that first time, I feel different about every game on the schedule. Yes. 
I'm not you can quite draw ready from to, it. Yeah, I'm yep. not quite ready to pick Auburn over Vandy yet. I'm not quite there. I might be there. I might get there because I really don't know at this point. But I feel better about it, especially with the way you know Vandy played against Texas. Like that's a good football team. That's a good, good football team. I do think this one's a little personal. I think it's a little personal at Jordan Hare Stadium. I think it's going to get rowdy. You've got a team that might start to believe in themselves. We heard Hugh Freeze say last week about how he's adjusting and he's coaching folks differently and, and talking to a few players and a few folks within the program. That seems to have been true. Is that why Auburn beat Kentucky on Saturday night? I don't know. I don't know. It's impossible to know. But the team did look better in key situations in the second half. They didn't really look a whole lot different in the first half. Just to be honest, they looked like the same team in the first half. Did something switch mentally at halftime? I don't know. I don't know. I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking whatever changes were brought about in coaching styles this week, when Auburn fell behind 10 nothing, I was thinking, eh, it's not paying dividends. They look less prepared, less emo, you know, less emotional. That first then, quarter was bad. It was really it, bad. Something, and, and you know, you, you try to go back to like, okay, is there a eureka moment? Is there an aha moment that says, okay, where did Auburn finally flip the script? First drive of the second half. That's it. That, that to me is when you could, if, if Auburn goes on to get better in the second half and make marked progress. I don't know what that record looks like. I'm just saying win a few more games and at the end of the year say, okay, boy, did Auburn improve the second half of the season. If they go on to do that, this is the kind of game and let's that's the kind that. of moment. Yeah, yeah, let's talk through that. I mean, if you beat Vandy on Saturday and you beat ULM, you have to beat either A&M or Bama for a chance to go to a bowl game. And if that happens, if you're even in that situation, I'm counting, right? Is that correct? You're absolutely right. Yeah, you and if you're get, even in that situation, yeah. and if you're even in that situation, you have to say they got better, they showed marked progress, and yes. they turned their season around. I don't care what ha I get it. If you go five and seven, you're going to have a lot of people going, "My God, if they could have just got one of those and held on that they blew." I understand that the what about isms and the what ifs, but if you look at it and say well, they won three games in a row, they they turned this around a little bit. They found ways to win. They beat a Vanderbilt team that had Texas on the ropes and, you know, beat Alabama. There, if, if that happens, and I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I'm no, saying this is just, yeah, that's if, not going to happen. If the turns around, it's because I think the moment is that first drive yep. of the second half last night. I mean, it was incredible. It was incredible. I got a text from um from a, a good friend of mine after that was over. He's like, was that the best drive of the season? I'm like, I think so. I it was so it was. balanced, too. It was mm -hmm. so balanced in the play calling and – it was just individual – I mean, again, I think that was the drive, and maybe I'm not. I'm trying to think about it, but the, that was the drive that Cam Brown yeah. made his big reception. So those are when you're like, okay, well, maybe, you know, things took, that are normally it, everybody. It consumed seven minutes, over seven minutes of game time, and it was a 14-play drive for 75 yards, and you scored. I mean, like, what else do you want? And they caught the fade ball. Sure. Right? Yeah. I mean, that that was, I think, poetic justice is that the play that we kept going back to last week that could have cost Auburn the game that was dropped to the other side of the field was caught this time. And and, and so there was some sweet justice in that. Um, the, the, the wide receivers, I made this point on the live show, the wide receivers that broke tackle after tackle stopped short of the first down marker to get the first down. That's winning football. That's making winning plays. Yeah. The dump downs, the individual efforts. The you know, listen. Auburn got two, three, four, five yards on a lot of plays where it looked like they were stopped. That's a good point. They fell <laughs> and forward. those Jarquez did a great job of falling forward. Demar and the receivers two. broke receivers tackles. Yeah. I mean, KLS. Down, I mean, stopped three yards, broke a tackle, got eight more. Right. Yep. Yep. So those add up. Those, are the, those add up. Those, those, those add up. definitely add up. Yep, they take a All right, so, so what does this mean moving forward? I mean, I, I think what Auburn did last night is sustainable because of who Kentucky is. That's coming up right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol. Can you imagine waking up? Can you imagine waking up and, uh, and feeling rough after a late night? 
I got to tell you, in the first half, I was getting tagged in a lot of tweets by people saying, Dap, are you taking your Z-Biotics? Because I know is. you're going to need it after this game. There it is. And uh, yeah. Hey, and there's a chance some of you guys are listening to this this morning, Sunday morning, saying, man, I wish I had Z-Biotics. Well, now you can. Now you can. You can head over to zbiotics.com slash locked on college. You can learn more about it. But you can get 15% off your first order. Uh, so the gist of it is Z-Biotics pre-alcohol. Uh, you take that as your first drink of the night. Then you drink responsibly. And then you get to enjoy the next day. So head over to zbiotics.com slash locked on college and use promo code locked on college for uh, 15% off your order. Shout out to uh, to Z-Biotics for making a lot of Auburn fans' mornings even better. Thank you so much for making Locked on Auburn your first listen every single day as we react and recap Auburn's 24-10 to 10 win over the Kentucky Wildcats. So many people in our live chat last night said, well, it's just Kentucky. It's just Kentucky. And it's like, if you want to have that view on it, I'm not going to be able to change your mind. If you want to be unhappy, like that's fine. I don't care. It's okay to be happy about things, though. Just a quick reminder, it's okay to be happy about things. Going into this matchup, I mean, it was pretty widely agreed upon that Kentucky's defense, specifically the front seven, was a top half defense in the SEC, right? Like, that's not that's not saying Correct. anything groundbreaking. Statistically, that may change because Auburn put up 498 yards of total offense on them last night. And I think as far as just like what they did on the defensive line, I forgot who, who if somebody came on the show. It may have been you, Daryl. Somebody came on the show last week and said that Kentucky's defensive front is going to be probably the best defensive front that you're going to play for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see if that stands up or not. But there's a lot of respect for the guys on Kentucky's defensive front. And Auburn was able to do what they wanted to against them. And so like, I, I guess my statement or, or question, I may phrase it as a question to you, but what Auburn did last night, sustainable for the rest of the season. Maybe not Jarquez Hunter getting 278 yards on the ground. It might be a more balanced approach, maybe less burst plays. But I think Auburn finding an identity and running the football, unlike they were able to do against Missouri, by the way, but I do think them moving forward with this identity will help them. Glad you said that word twice. I was on a show this week. And I was talking to former Auburn defensive back Alvin Briggs, who has been on some championship Auburn teams. And he asked me, he said, Daryl, I think the problem right now with Auburn is they do not have an identity. He said it once. He said it twice. This is a guy that played for Pat Dye. I trust his opinion. Well, what you just said, Zach, you nailed it. Tonight, Auburn found its offensive identity. And whatever happens going forward, that's why it is sustainable. Because you lean on that. You draw on that and you say, well, this is who we are and we've proved this is who we are. And when, when the adversity strikes and you need a play or you need a drive, you go to your identity. You go to who you are. You don't get cute. You don't go away from it. Yeah. Auburn found itself, whether it's going to be enough to win two, three, one more, who knows? But I'm telling you, Auburn found what they need to be tonight if they continue to, to utilize that and stay the course. This is their identity. I, again, Jarko was Hunter ain't going to go for 273, but my God, if what you saw tonight, you don't give him the ball at least 25 times a game, then that's ridiculous. If he can handle it and he feels okay on the sideline every time he, he runs should be off fresh. and you check with him. That's the thing, though. I, again, let's, go, let's look back now. As we go through this stretch of games, because Hunter wasn't overused the first six games, that's and I get it, him. people – it's going to help them. Did People you hear the TV screaming. broadcast last night? They're like, yeah, they give it to them 20 times a game, and usually tomorrow about 10. I'm like, what are you like, watching? What, what, game, what are you watching? Do I, I watch the last somebody, two weeks? I also heard somebody say with a minute 48 left, Auburn's not a team you're going to want to play coming down the stretch. That's right. They didn't and, say that. And I also remember somebody who is not very smart being on your podcast earlier in the week, predicting Jarquez Hunter would have a tough time breaking 70 yards. So that was you. you that was that. that was me. I will own it. I, think, I will wear I probably it. agreed with you. I think I agreed with you. I didn't think I, I, mean, I would I, be able to run it. I did not think that. I mean, once he broke 100, it was like Katie bar the door. I knew. It, I mean, this was like people need to understand this was an historical rushing night performance by Jarquez Hunter. If you look at Auburn football lore, how many times the running back's gone over 270? I mean, it can't be that many times. And he did it against not Furman, 
not the Citadel. Hey, I got I got a stat for you. I got a stat for you. This right. is from this is from Stat Tiger, who he digs up some great stuff. His tweet says, "Can only date this one from 1987 to 2024." So I mean, most of Auburn's relevant history. But Hunter is the only Auburn player to have three runs of 45 yards or more in one game. It happened on the same night Auburn started the game with 13 pass plays and only one design run play. Thanks for committing to the run, Coach Freeze. But only player in Auburn history to have three runs of 45 yards or more in a game. Since uh, since 87. Since 87, yeah. Yeah, I would have to think the man on my shirt probably did that before 87. At, Fair. At game. But, I, but I will say this, too. And don't drag me for saying... Auburn's relevant history. I should have said recent history. Yeah, because the relevant history. So yeah, but I, I, I sure. would. I, I don't, don't know. Drag I don't have I'm sorry. I'm wrong. I should have. I'd like to know how many backs in Auburn history have had 270 yards or more. I mean, that's a really high water mark. And again, I remember Bo getting against South Southwest Louisiana. That's what they mm -hmm. were called. Um, Furman, Citadel, and Trey Mason. I remember how he got against how many he got against Missouri. Yeah, the SEC insane. title game, but it was insane. Of course, he ran it 56 times, though. I mean, you know, <laughs> Hunter didn't. I mean, he, 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 his average yards per carry was insane last night. So that was an historical performance on the road against the I've got it. SEC. Assuming Wikipedia is correct. Okay. Bo Jackson went for 290 against Southwestern Louisiana. You said that. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Look at you. Trey Mason went for 304 against Missouri. And then Curtis Kuykendall in 1944 <laughs> ran for 307 against Miami, apparently. So wow. there you go. Yeah. So that would have that, been the that is historic. Best, yeah. Assuming Wikipedia is correct. So yeah. And again, and, and only, you know, Missouri was the only other SEC opponent that it was done against. I mean, Southwest Louisiana, and I don't know, Miami in 1944 was not the Miami they are now. So uh, pretty impressive. Pretty, pretty impressive, heady stuff right there. Yeah, it's incredible. You, it's incredible. In, in a year that Auburn has found ways to lose football games historically, okay, you saw something as an Auburn fan that was historically special and elite on the good side. And that is just amazing, the 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 turnaround on that. Yeah. Just the, you know, the, the, the contradict, but that's true. I mean, you know, for those that, were upset and hung. You you can say where you were on the night of October such and such, two thousand twenty four, when 26. Hunter went for twenty, you know, two hundred seventy something yards. So yeah, incredible, incredible stuff. And so glad it happened to Jarquez because I I can't imagine this year. Um, it's had to have been frustrating for him. So good for him, good for him. All right, I I do want to touch on some of the stuff that went wrong. I don't want to leave with that because it's super easy to talk about the bad side. I really wanted to celebrate what happened last night because it was important. It was important, no question. But there's a few things where it's like, hey, why, why does this stuff keep happening? That, that's coming up in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Game Time is the best place to buy tickets, whether it's for football, basketball, baseball, any sport, as well as concert. Uh, if you want to go see a, a comedy show, some stand-up, whatever it is, Game Time has you covered. And Daryl, you trust Game Time. I trust Game Time. It's the only place I buy tickets now. Out of town right now with a relative. He's a big Celtics fan. We pulled up Game Time to see when they were playing the Hawks, when they were playing the Pelicans, Ooh. somewhere close. Tickets, very reasonable in some pretty good locations. A couple of those lightning deals, a couple of those zone specials. So yeah, yeah. Pulled it up to pulled it up yesterday morning to kind of check that out as a matter of fact. Yeah, game time picks. The curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on college for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on college for twenty dollars off. Download game time today. What time is it? It's game, game time. time. Yeah. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Auburn your first listen every single day. Normally, I'm like, why are you guys listening after a dramatic loss? But we finally get to recap a win, Daryl. We finally get to talk yes. about a win. I do want to touch about, okay, so let, let's talk about what happened at the end of the first half because, like, that is concerning. And some of it, I think, is player induced and some of it is coaching. I do think it falls more on the players 
execution on this than the coach because you have a veteran quarterback, so you can kind of use your timeouts a little little more um, freely. But I, I did, when Auburn called their last timeout, when there was what, like 20-something seconds remaining? On first down and ran the ball. See, I think the genesis of this yes. of this failure started right there. Yeah, it's so like that is probably on the coach. That is to run yep. the ball in that situation because you want to keep your time out. So if you get sacked or if you throw it, um, if you throw it, you know, to the sideline and they're not able to get out of bounds and the clock keeps running or whatever. I mean, there's a million reasons why you want a timeout in that situation. And you 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 run the ball. You call a timeout. It's your last timeout. And then you call a quick, you know, sideline thing. I think it was the Rivaldo, possibly. I think it was the Rivaldo Fairweather. You get like four or five yards. Like, okay, cool. You wasted like two seconds. That's awesome. But then it's just like everybody knows the only thing you can't do is, is, he, is take a sack. Is take a sack or just throw it away. If your first read for the, in the end zone's not there, you just overthrow them and and you you kick the field goal. Like that's just so basic. And then you see Peyton, like you see him thinking, you see him like double clutch it, and then you know he he takes the sack. And a few people were critical of the pass protection. I'm like, well, that's the the play is like the, the play is it's either there or you throw it away. Like that's the situation. Like you don't. You're not going to block for five seconds in that in that situation and watch them run around in the pocket. So part of that, I, I think, is on the coaching staff for not um, saving that timeout. But also, like, if you're a veteran quarterback, you just got to know. You got to know you can't do that. Well, there's enough blame to go around on that play. Let me break that. First of all, it, one of the oldest, most cliche comments you hear in football is all the time you hear, you cannot take a sack here. You got. I mean, we, we hear that all the time. So I get that. That's Peyton Thorne. You got to have that clock in your head. Drop back to pass. Two seconds. Get rid of it. But in a situation like that, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Or the coaching staff could take that situation out of Peyton Thorne's hands if they just rolled him out. Take the snap. Roll right. If there's somebody open in the end zone, throw it. If not. You throw it to Louisville, and that's it, and you're done, and you kick the field goal. You don't get an opportunity to sack him if you roll him out, and you still have an opportunity to look downfield with your eyes and throw a pass. Right. Just dropping back straight back. Look, it was a three-step drop, and he didn't get to his third step. I know you said he double-clutched, and the guy did get in there pretty quickly. So that is partly on Peyton and the mental clock in his head, but I also think as a coaching staff, don't even put him in that situation. Roll sure. him out. 100%. Roll him out and then just let him throw it into the bleachers if something's not there, if the drag's not there. But you tell him the depth on this pass route is anybody, everybody's running into the end zone. You throw it in the end zone or you throw it into the third row. That that's that's a failure. That that's a and especially they had 14 guys on the field when they were trying to kick the field goal. That's why they never snapped it with two seconds left to go. Although it's probably that, that, that was, was wild difficult. too. Yeah. And, and, I was and, like, snap it, snap it. And they did. And that's something I'm going to try to talk to some folks about. It's like, why, how is there confusion on like who's coming out for the field goal? That's it. I, I don't know. That was just, that, that was surprising to me. I thought the time, like you don't have a whole lot of time to get everybody out there. Like I get that, but who are the extra guys? Did I, I just don't understand how you can get 14. Like you're off by three people. Someone like didn't get off the field. Scheme. Yeah, that's obvious. Yeah, um, I don't know, but but you have a field goal unit that goes on out there. You know, you're not a part of it, so get off the field. Those are the kind of mental mistakes that 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 that's yeah. Unless you're unless up. you're trying a thing where like in an end of half or end of game situation, do you keep some guys on the field to like make it go quicker, like linemen or something? And like some people caught the memo, and some people did. I, I'm just trying to give them the benefit of the doubt because, like, I don't, I don't understand how that happened. But yeah. that's all right. That's all right. But all in all, incredible night, incredible night for the Auburn Tigers, and I think this fan base needed it, Daryl. I think this team needed it. I think this coaching staff needed it. So let's see what they do. Vandy's coming to town, and that is a big game. It's a bigger, uh, larger game than we all thought it would be going into the season. 
they're a legit good football team. I mean, they gave Texas everything they had on the road. Or no, that was in Nashville. No, it was in Nashville. They play different in Nashville than they do on the road. Now that's true. Granted, I think they lost they lost to Missouri on the road in overtime, and they lost to Georgia State in Nashville. But they struggled with Ball State before the Texas game. Could have been a case example of looking ahead to Texas. But Maybe. they are a different football team away from Nashville. So we'll see. Auburn hasn't been home, you know, since the summer solstice. Since you, I mean, and so now they get to come back home. And I think there should be some anticipation from yeah. the, from the from the fans. I think you're right. I think you're right. So we'll talk about that every single day this week. So be sure to come back. Uh, like the video, please subscribe. Daryl, how can people check out everything you've got going on? Follow me on XDAP6410, Instagram, Daryl Dapp, with you three times a week, and then I'll drop it. There'll be an article, Dapp Recap, in the thebarnauburn.com today. Yep, thebarnauburn.com. Go check it out. Go check it out. Like the video. Please subscribe. We'll see you next time. This has been Locked on Auburn.